This morning, Hurricane Ian is rapidly intensifying off Florida's coast. Thanks for joining us at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Annette Iram, where you see in this imagery right here, that is mm. a huge eye of that hurricane. Right now, Ian is just shy of the most devastating, the most catastrophic Category 5 hurricane, just shy of that by two miles an hour when it comes to winds. Satellite images show the eye of the storm was packed with lightning. In fact, tornadoes have already been reported, and it killed at least two people in Cuba and knocked out power to that entire country. So we want to send it over to Evan right now. You've been tracking, Ian. I mean, the size of this, it's just incredible to see. Yeah, I mean, we have day by day been following its rapid intensification from Cuba up to this west coast of Florida, where it is now hours away from making landfall, but already those outer bands are just wrecking the coastline from Fort Myers all the way up through Tampa. All of the cameras that we've seen have shown that most coastal communities are closed off because that storm surge is already starting to pick up. The eye of the storm is just offshore right now. Sustained winds at 155 miles per hour, two miles per hour shy of a category five, as you heard, and watch as it makes its way all the way from Fort Myers inland, right between Tampa and Fort Myers headed toward Daytona Beach. This is going to be a storm that we keep track of all morning long and over the next 24 hours and 48 hours. The response that comes to Western Florida will keep you up to date. And here locally, we'll also get a check of the forecast that includes another day of uh, heat advisory in effect and excessive heat warning. All the details in just a few minutes. Right now, local volunteers are on standby to help in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. And CBS 8's Chris Gro joining us live outside Red Cross headquarters in Kearney Mesa. When we see the images of what's happening there, so many San Diegans want to help. Chris. And a lot of them are signing up with the Red Cross again, prepared to leave at a moment's okay. notice to go to Florida to help in that immediate aftermath. And for those that are waiting, a lot of work is done both beforehand and after. In fact, the American Red Cross says that they've already moved tens of thousands of relief supplies, such as cots to the Sunshine, Sunshine State. Dozens of shelters have opened up and a lot of people have given, uh, you know, again, their time to be ready to go to Florida at a moment's notice. Now, as for the situation in Florida, why the Red Cross is so necessary and a lot of these volunteer organizations is, get, is that a lot of people, even though they've been given evacuation orders, they have nowhere to go. So they can uh, go to these Red Cross shelters in advance, but then also afterwards. Some of them are also caught off guard by the path of the storm. They're not able to get the supplies in times. And so those are oftentimes the most vulnerable people. Now, Jane Scanlon, she's been a volunteer with the American Red Cross here locally for 12 years and as a shelter lead for the San Diego chapter, we spoke with her in preparation for their uh, potential trip here to Florida. Take a listen to what she had to say. The volunteers from across the United States coming to Florida to help out, you know, every one of them ready to work very, very long days, especially during the hurricane and right immediately after. And a lot of people, again, wondering how it is that they can help, how they can potentially volunteer, how they can donate. You can find a quick link on how to do that by going to our website, cbs8.com, and clicking on the story. Eric and Netta. And Chris, we know uh, you have lots of cool local ties to Florida. You grew up there. you got a lot of family there. Have you been able to check in on everyone? Uh, how's everyone doing uh, at home? Yeah, and that, that is the important thing, how everyone is doing there in the state of Florida. And like so many people, they're waiting, they're watching just like us. And that is sort of the worst part for those who, again, have family in Florida, is that essentially you're just waiting to find out what's going to happen after the storm. There's going to be that sort of cone of silence, that period where you may not be able mm -hmm. to talk to some of your loved ones. I've, I've got family in South Florida who, again, seem to be, again, based on the path, like they're going to do okay. My brother... Yeah. Uh, his girlfriend there in Orlando, they might be getting some flooding, et cetera. So, uh, you know, a, lo a lot of anxiety, uh, a lot of worry. But again, uh, Floridians, they, they, they're, we're prepared for this uh, as best we can. So uh, a lot of that preparation goes into this. And so, again, we wish the best for everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. So, right. again, Especially yeah. people in Fort Myers where it looks like it's tracking that way. Yeah. A 16-foot storm surge. I can't imagine mm -hmm. what will withstand such a thing. Chris, thank you for that. We wish the best for your family. Thanks, guys. And now we want to turn here to our other top story, something that affects many of us here. Mm -hmm. San Diego's average gas price is over $6 again. Oh, we thought this was over, right? It increased 14 cents overnight. This is the largest increase since July of 2015. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol is in Spring Valley now with the latest on these prices. Good morning. Good morning, Eric and Netta. Well, it's 56 
more cents than it was just a week ago. So if you're seeing any place that's under $6 like we are here in Spring Valley, Valley $5.89 definitely fill up. Now, why are we seeing these price hikes? Well, because California has strict environmental restrictions, they require something called the summer blend for reduction of air pollution. And we spoke with AAA about why this really does impact our prices. It's not like we can get that product uh, delivered to us. So, you know, that that creates this fuel island, if you will, or bubble that we're in here in Southern California. It's why we pay. That is one of the reasons why we pay some of the highest gas prices in the nation. He's mentioning the special formula that some are blend that's only produced by 10 refineries throughout the state. So again, it's hard to get that fuel to us, which hikes those prices. They also say uh, some of those price is due to refinery producing less throughout the state. Many of those plants are now actually temporarily offline as they perform critical maintenance that had been postponed from earlier this year. So I do have some encouraging news though. Gas stations throughout the state of California will start selling the state's winter blend in November, usually 15 to 20 cents cheaper than the summer blend we have now. So we have some happy days coming in terms of making gas just a little bit more affordable, but because of those environmental restrictions here in California, we really are seeing a much larger number in terms of regular plus uh, gas. But in Spring Valley here on the corner and the gas station, 589 is the cheapest. And I do want to mention that's the gas option. I'll send it back to you in the studio. And you see people filling up right there behind her. Dana Marie, thank you. We do want to help you save some money when you fill up. So you can text the word gas to 858-571-8888. You'll get a link to an interactive map that shows prices around the county and what might be cheapest near you. Well, this morning, police need your help looking for a missing teenager. Please take a look at your screen. 16-year-old Maria Isabel Vega Costilla left her home on Morley Street in Linda Vista Monday morning. Police say she left a note saying goodbye to her family. She's 5'5", five five, weighs 120 pounds, has brown hair and brown eyes. You're asked to call police if you see her. Today, the man accused of killing a toddler in a hit and run crash is set to make his first court appearance. Yeah, there's a growing memorial at the site of the crash in City Heights. It happened Saturday along Redwood Street. Officials say 45 year old Margarito Vargas Angeles was speeding and driving drunk when he hit a one year old girl. Oh, there's her picture, Anna Lee Rodarte. That was her name. There's a GoFundMe now set up for the child's funeral expenses to try to help the family out. We have a link at CBS8.com. Just click on the help button. Today, the man accused of killing his nephew and hurting a bystander is expected in court. Police say Ramiro Cervantes shot his nephew at a Barrio Logan apartment. This was Friday night. One of the bullets went through the wall at nearby Border X Brewing right there on Logan Avenue, and that bullet actually hit a customer. Thankfully, that person's expected to be okay. The brewery's owner, David Favela, spoke to us. He hopes this incident does not create a negative image of his business or the Barrio Logan neighborhood. The outpouring of support and love from our customers and the community has been extensive. For this to happen, people understand that this is not the norm, uh, nor for Barrio Logan as a whole. Now, many of those businesses have been working hard to get people to visit and to see the beauty that is there. So the suspect now will be arraigned this afternoon. This morning, San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria is responding to criticism over our homeless crisis here, which has been growing. Yesterday, local basketball legend Bill Walton spoke out during a news conference with the nonprofit Lucky Duck Foundation. They announced a new initiative to grade local leaders on how they're addressing homelessness. Walton also called for Mayor Gloria to step down. Todd Gloria has made it worse. He is not up to the job. He does not know how to do the job, sadly. And with a broken heart, I can no longer claim that San Diego is the greatest place on earth. Well, the mayor's office released a statement saying in part, quote, unlike Mr. Walton, Mayor Gloria is translating that frustration into decisive, sustained action to improve the situation. To say that he has done nothing on homelessness is objectively false. Coming up here at 630, a look at what is being done on the county level to address the homeless crisis.
And at 610 here on this Wednesday morning, a lot of folks that are heading out may run into right there. Yeah, the that you're you can see it on display here. This is Mount Soledad starting uh, off our Wednesday morning. Walking out the door, we've got those low clouds. Visibility down to about a quarter of a mile, half a mile in some spots on the map. But you saw that sunrise behind it. We are right now about 20 minutes shy of it, that actual sunrise. But we're seeing kind of that twilight prior to the sunrise with plenty of light beaming through. Along the coastline is where where we're most limited Oceanside down to Carlsbad about a quarter of a mile to half a mile uh, down to Kearney Mesa and then all the way through downtown in the South Bay. That's where we're seeing another pocket of uh, low clouds. So keep in mind visibility is limited as you are driving mainly this morning. You'll see some impacts on the road so far. Luckily we haven't seen any major crashes or collisions pop up. Forecast for the day shows low 80s along the coast, low 90s inland. So this fog is part of this change in the forecast that we see as strong onshore flow strengthens that'll cool us down along the coast and inland, but not today. Today we're hanging on to the heat out there. Could trigger a few showers and thunderstorms over the mountains. Monsoonal moisture is in the forecast today with that ridge of high pressure over about New Mexico and Texas, and that means that some of that moisture could feed in from the east, and we could see then a few showers and thunderstorms over the mountains. Primarily today, that's the final day of heat before we start to see our temperatures cool down steadily. Not going to say it's the final day where temperatures are above average because it seems like tomorrow will still be a warmer day, but we are cooling down steadily day by day. Heat advisory in effect all the way through 8 p.m. on your Wednesday. Excessive heat warning also has the same matched expiration date now uh, because of just how hot it is going to be getting. So you see how over the next several days we're cooling down from here. Final day today of that heat before we start to see those cooler temperatures come around. As far as traffic goes, so far things have been quiet on the roads this morning. We will keep you up to date if we see any big changes, but uh, you can see from our traffic map so far, uh, we are doing all right out there. No major crashes or collisions. Back to